بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی ہیڈ اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ سیشن آن ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی انٹروڈکشن ریلیٹڈ ٹو پرابلمس فیسڈ بائی ڈیولپنگ اکانمیز اینڈ وی گوئنگ ٹو موو اے ہیڈ اینڈ لک ایٹ اے فیو ادر ایشوز اینڈ اے فیو ادر ڈائنامکس وچ از ایگریویٹنگ اینڈ انہانسنگ دیز پرابلمس فیسڈ بائی ڈیولپنگ اکانمیز ان دا ٹوینٹی فرسٹ سینچری لیڈیز اینڈ جنمن جسٹ لائک آئی واز مینشننگ دیٹ سم آف دا پرابلمس ووڈ آلسو بی انکلوڈنگ Uh, lower economic growth, which we are seeing right now. We see this very big deficit, which tends to exist in the case of countries like Sri Lanka and Pakistan. And in Pakistan, we see that we have a huge import bill while our exports, uh, unfortunately, despite the dollar going up, have dwindled due to various circumstances. Uh, we see a dominant public sector and the general perception is that corporate governance is meant for the private sector. While that is not the case, it's meant for uh, all forms of business. They could be the private sector, doing business, the social sector doing business, or the public sector doing business, or even the military inc, which we call uh, the uh, different uh, defense forces which are doing uh, multiple businesses. So uh, the, the good governance and corporate governance uh, codes and principles apply to all of these uh, different sectors. And uh, just thinking uh, that because uh, the public sector tends to dominate Uh, big business in countries like Pakistan or even in countries like Thailand, it doesn't mean uh, that uh, they can uh, have any form of abstinence or any uh, exception uh, from uh, being uh, following the corporate governance principles and guidelines which exist. And that is the reason why that we see that there is lack of good governance. Uh, and that leads to a lack of effectiveness of privatization. So again, that is also very important that Privatization should be transparent, merit-based, non-biased, uh, non-discriminatory, and open. And that will lead to much better privatization. A lack of awareness among stakeholders tends to exist, and that can also be overcome through proper uh, knowledge-based and knowledge-focused uh, uh, information-intensive uh, sessions, capacity-building programs, and frameworks, which would ensure that everyone is aware uh, of how corporate governance should be practiced. Uh, we basically see that there is greater government influence and less autonomy to enterprises and larger shareholders in most of the companies uh, are the private funds. So again, these also are uh, various, uh, various factors which are affecting corporate governance as a whole in developing economies. Internal owners dominate more than a company's external owners. External owners do not have enough voting power. Concentration of ownership in the hands of a few individuals and family-owned Uh, corporations leading to oligarchies, leading to conglomerates, and also leading to a few elite uh, basically uh, dominating the whole industrial and a whole corporate landscape, which uh, definitely needs to be rectified in a proper way. Lack of strong legal protection, which I talked about in the last session, for investors is used as a means to overcome the power of the management. So again, uh, what we see is, is that proper frameworks uh, are not implemented and the laws uh, are not implemented in total. And Uh, properly without any discrimination. So that also can lead to a lot of problems in the short and long term. Uh, capital markets are underdeveloped and do not facilitate the inflow of new capital. Market transactions are often based on internal information and are often manipulative. And then redrawing property rights and contract laws are slow in coming. And therefore, uh, it also has to be given a lot of impetus. And a very important thing is, is that when we're talking about, uh, uh, when we're talking about overseas uh, direct Uh, investment or uh, foreign direct investment or we are talking about expatriates investing, then we have to create the frameworks which can protect them and also ensure uh, that there is a free competition and free flow uh, which tends to exist within the system. Uh, and that uh, can also be uh, rectified through a well-regulated banking sector, which developing economies tend to lack. And uh, a very important requirement for an exit mechanism, bankruptcy and foreclosure norms, which would also tend to facilitate Uh, the investors and also different uh, market players and m market contributors that they can come into an economy, they can come into uh, a particular corporate sector and are also able to extricate themselves without getting into complex and complicated uh, problems throughout. So uh, these problems uh, tend to exist uh, within uh, the developing economy. Sound securities market do not exist and uh, we again see this, this flux which tends to Uh, take place and even in our own stock market we are seeing a major dip right now taking place competitive markets have not been developed corruption and mismanagement is abound and uh, proper accountability 
uh, is not being uh, implemented either in the public, private or social sectors and there is a great need to ensure that there is a re zero tolerance uh, in all of that to ensure that there is a fair uh, playing field available for everyone at an individual, institutional or even at a national level. And the guidelines also have to be standardized and uniform so that everyone can comprehend them and can implement them in the best possible way. So, what we see, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, in developing and transitional economies just like Pakistan, we are right now in a, a very complex and complicated situation. And we have to adopt uh, the right market strategies, uh, the right economic strategies, and also the right policies to ensure uh, that we can get out of this quagmire situation and we can have uh, a very stable and also very progressive, developed, and corporate uh, governance attuned uh, corporate sector. That is extremely important. Thank you so much.